Guess what's going on in Portland? Portland City Council voted to ban homeless camping. So, again, all they're going to do is criminalize homelessness. They're not going to solve it. We have the money to solve it. We could solve it like that. The money we sent to Ukraine alone this year could solve homelessness. Everybody could have a home. You know they've solved homelessness in certain states like Mississippi. Mississippi, you know how they did it? They built housing. <laughs> and by the way, with Portland, how are they going to enforce this ban? I, I'm with you on that. So here, the Portland City Council voted to ban homeless camp, homeless camping by 2024 oh, okay. and approved four other proposals. So you can still do it in 2023. Yeah, right. Thursday, they aimed at addressing a deepening humanitarian crisis that spans every corner of the city. So again, instead of saying, hey, we figured out how we're going to help these people, they just would have hammer said, we're going to make it criminal. You know how much it costs to put somebody in prison in California? $100,000 a year. A hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Do you think you'd rather put a homeless person in prison for a hundred thousand dollars or maybe give them housing, a for, tiny house, a tiny house for ten thousand dollars? You want to do that well, or maybe they, give them an apartment? But, but I, you see, I come from a private prison uh, mogul family. Yeah, and, uh, yeah we, that's we right. Like the hundred thousand thing. They like that. The ambitious plan, this is an ambitious plan in Portland, mm. brought forth by Mayor Ted Wheeler and Commissioner Dan Ryan, lays the groundwork for creating thousands of new affordable <laughs> housing units. That's good. It says lays the groundwork, lays so that the means it doesn't do Doesn't shit. do it. Getting more unsheltered people into addiction or mental health treatment, and most controversially, banning unsanctioned camping. That's the that's part. That's the part. Yeah, that's the part that'll That's get the done. part that they're going to get done. They're going to get done this part. The, all this other part. I bet you they're not going to get it done. Lays the ground. You could have laid foundations of small uh, homes. Uh, that's right. <laughs> Four resolutions passed unanimously, but Commissioner Joanne Hardesty voted against the camping ban and the creation of city-run campsites. I have had people tell me it is the politically smart thing to vote yes, and it would be easy to do that. But saying we will magically wave a wand in 18 months and there will be no more street camping is not real. It is unrealistic, cruel, and inhumane. That's what I said. How are they going to afford it? How are they going to do it? That's what we're. She added that the campaign ban resolution also left out critical details, including where the camps will be sited, costs, funding sources, code changes, and necessary partners to make the plan viable. So they're going to set up city run campsites. That's what she's talking about here. This seems crazy. Seems crazy. Official, and they, and they don't have any of the details worked out. And of course, they never will. Officials in the mayor's office said they do not know how much any of the proposals will cost, though they plan to start phasing in the camping ban in May 2023. So we know what we got. We got the hammer ready. We know that's <laughs> happening. The five resolutions approved Thursday will a ban unsanctioned camping citywide and establish six large scale official camping sites with sanitary and other services for between 150 and 250 people. So you're not going to build tiny houses for them. You're not going to build housing for them. You're going to tell them, bring your tent over here and we'll give you a place to piss. And how, yeah, which you have now. Which how, they have now. <laughs> wait, six large scale. So it's got services for 250 people. Is that They got to have way more homeless people camping than that. But the, that's just. So each site will have between 100 and 200. That's what I. That's how oh. I read that. Push this. this it's the second thing. They're going to push the city to more aggressively help create 20,000 new affordable housing units in the next 10 years by reducing bureaucratic red tape, identifying additional public-private partnerships, and lobbying for more state and federal funding. So they're not going to do anything. So that's not... <laughs> That's what. That's how I read that. No red tape. We got to round them up and put yeah. them in city camps. It's the so they again. They're not going to. Hey, we get. We're going to put a penny tax for the next five years, and all that money is going to go to new affordable housing, and the government's going to contract it. No, that, that they're not. They're going to. Hey, we're going to help. We're going to try. We're going to reduce the bureaucratic red tape, so then private developers can come in and make. Private developers don't want to make housing for low income people. Private developers want to make housing for rich people. Uh, that's why the government needs to get involved. So removing red tape sounds like you, okay. Uh, offer, they're going to offer more work opportunities for the city's most vulnerable residents. They're just going to do it. They don't know how they're going to do it. They don't say how they're going to do it or how they're going to fund it. They're going to seek assistance from Multnomah County District Attorney Mike Schmidt to create a new diversion program that would eliminate citations and low-level offenses from homeless people's records if they agree 
to undergo mental health or addiction treatment. Why don't you just give them that? Why don't you just give them mental health and addiction treatment? Why don't you just give that them? Form, they're going to formalize a request to the state, county, and other government parts. They're going to they're going to ask for stuff. They're going to we're going to formally ask people to do to help. Okay, hardest these again. This is not at least they're doing something. But this again, they're not going to do anything that actually helps people, I guarantee you. Hardesty said she wished the council would have taken more time to do community engagement and work with homelessness experts to create a plan. They didn't do that? No. Rather than agree to the five proposals first floated by Wheeler two weeks ago. So they didn't do that? Kind of makes me think they're not serious about helping homeless people. Lauren Armory, who works for Provider Sisters of the Road, said it was ludicrous to vote on this with no clear plan on where the sites would go or where funding would come from, <laughs> and with only two weeks to discuss this as a community. Well, it worked in Iraq. <laughs> They'll greet us as liberators. Mercedes Elizalde, the public policy director for housing and services organization Central City Concern, asked the city to take more time to consult people experiencing homelessness. Criminalizing it is not a recipe for success, and instead it punishes people for failures in our system. I agree. Some business owners, however, spoke in favor of the camping ban. So I understand why people want a camping ban. I understand. I'm not demonizing those people for wanting something to be done. Uh, but you should hold your politicians accountable for actually doing something about it instead of criminalizing it. Uh, some business owners, however, spoke in favor of the camping ban, saying it would improve situations for businesses that wanted to stay and thrive in the city. I get that. If you got people camping. So there's a hotel right down the street from our house on Ventura Boulevard, and it's a brand new hotel, and it looks really nice. And right across the street from it was a big homeless encampment, like hundreds of people right across the street. And so I can see how the, who that you know, everybody at that hotel is like, they're screwing our business. Why do I have to take on this burden? And no other businesses don't. We're not sharing this burden. Why don't blah, blah, blah. And I'm sure the owner of that hotel or the people working would like to try to help the situation. Everybody wants to do something. But for some reason, every time it goes on the ballot, hey, you want to tax yourself to help homeless people? In California, we vote yes. And they never do anything to help the homeless people. Ever. We are remember, we Kurt, pay a lot more money we for pay it and nothing and happens. And nothing ever happens. Thieves. Nothing ever happens. So this is a failure of government, and now their answer to it is to criminalize homelessness. Well, I'm, I have a lot of hope for that private uh, public partnership. Yeah, but, right. You know how yeah. those work great? Yeah. Jason Bolt, who owns an optics manufacturing company on Portland's east side, said businesses need to see change soon. He noted his employees have faced ma many safety issues related to unhoused people near his business, including burglaries, vandalized cars, harassment, and having to walk down the center of the road due to tents lining sidewalks. Again, we yes, we should do something about it, but the government's idea is to take those people and spend $100,000 a year, not in helping them, but in criminalizing them and putting them in a, in a cell. They should call this the under the carpet program. Uh -huh. It's like, oh, someone's coming. Sweep, 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 sweep. It is not safe for our current team, and we find it impossible to recruit and retain, he said. If something is not done this month to address safety issues, we will leave the area. We support Mayor Wheeler's proposal. So I get why people are desperate and they would support this. But there's actually better things to do with the money. Uh, so there you go. Portland criminalizing. That's the liberal bastion that... They, they told you Trump is the uh, fascist, and here they are criminalizing homelessness. Hey, we're doing live stand-up shows in Austin, Texas, Burbank, California, the Saturday after Thanksgiving, and in Los Angeles. Go to JimmyDoreComedy.com for a link for all our tickets and become a premium member. While you're there, you get access to all of our premium content unedited.